Greetings and namaste, everyone. Uh, I want to offer up a yin practice today. Um, it was kind of at the request of a few friends. I have some friends that are um, hairstylists, and I also have some friends that are baristas and bartenders, and they all kind of have the same complaint that at the end of the day, like the upper body just feels tight and exhausted, and they've been on their feet all day. So this is really a practice um, sort of geared towards um, essential workers. If you're someone that uh, stands on your feet all day, your food and bath, your hair stylist, your massage therapist, your uh, a grocery store uh, cashier, or a cashier of any sort, uh, you're a nurse, you're a doctor, whatever. Um, this is gonna give you a nice little chance to unwind at the end of the day. It's gonna be a relatively short practice, um, you know, maybe a little over 30 minutes, because I know at the end of your day, you don't wanna have another hour to do something, but uh, hopefully you'll also pick up some little poses that you can just kind of pick and choose to do at random times during the day. You won't really need any props except for one thing that's kind of unusual, but it'll make sense when we get there. Uh, a little bit of lotion. Um, so pause this if you need to, to go grab that. And then we're gonna make our way over to our mat. We're gonna start in child's pose. Um, I know that sometimes that's a pose for me that's not always super comfortable, particularly on my knees if I go into it right out of the gate. Uh, so if child's pose is not working for you, please feel free to come over on, on your back and just hug your knees into your chest or do um, a happy baby pose. All right, so let's make our way there. So with this child's pose, if you have other props, please feel free to, uh, to bring them into play here. Like if you had a bolster, you could run a bolster underneath you and lay your torso on that. If you had a block, you could bring your forehead uh, to a block. And if you can't quite get all the way there, even with the knees wide, just stack your arms on top of each other. And then your forehead resting on your mat, on your arms, your hands, whatever. And a couple of falling out exhales here. Remember in this yin practice, we want our breath to really be more in its uh, natural rhythm. We're not trying to get it to to be like we would do for a vinyasa class or a yang activity. So a couple of exhales through the mouth. As many of those as you need to feel like you are letting your breath find that natural rhythm. If you don't already have your arms extended, go ahead and extend them out. And then we're gonna walk our hands over to the left and as you walk your hands over to the left, maybe your right hand comes on top of your left hand. As you take this little turn towards the left, there's a good chance your right hip will come up off your heel. That's perfectly fine. This is a good opportunity to sort of think about your day, your week, whenever you're doing this, of that just kind of pouring out onto your mat. And then we're gonna walk over to the right. And as you walk those arms over to the right, maybe your left hand is on your right hand. Again, those breaths can just fall out of your mouth here to help you kind of tap into that relaxation response. Then let's walk our arms back to the front. And we're gonna come up into a little tabletop pose. Try to bring your ankles and your knees together. And 
then we'll just sit on the heels. Roll your shoulders back and down. If this doesn't feel great, maybe a cross leg position. We are going to be in this shape here for the next couple of poses. And then we're going to come forward a little bit. Curl your toes under. Try to get all your toes onto your mat. You might have to reach back. My pinkies tend to not want to, uh, to reach the floor here. So try to get all your toes on your mat. And if you're already feeling this, we'll go ahead and start the clock. <laughs> If you're already feeling this, just stay right here. And if it starts to get like from, it's going to probably be uncomfortable, but if you start to venture into the territory of pain, just ease forward a little bit, a couple of breaths and sink back down. If you can, bring your hands to your thighs and we'll sit up onto these heels. This is great for feet that have been trapped in shoes all day. Then we're gonna tip our left ear over towards that left shoulder. And see if you can just bring the arms alongside you so that those shoulders drop down from the ears. Bring your chin to the center. Right ear over towards right shoulder. Again, keep those arms kind of heavy. I'm hoping that if I add some neck and shoulder stuff in for you, you kind of get distracted by what's happening in your feet. Chin back to the chest, lift the head up. You're gonna look over that right shoulder and then just kind of look down a little bit. And look up. Come over that left shoulder. Look down. Ooh. If you spend a lot of time looking at computer screens, you'll feel this one. Look up back to the center. Again, if you need to come out for just a couple of breaths, you could again hinge forward, then you could stay low with the hands as you shift back or come back up. About 15 more seconds here, you guys. I am feeling this in these feet today. All right, hands to your mat. Uncurl the toes. You can kind of have a little temper tantrum there in them. And then we're going to sit back onto those heels. Then we're going to stretch the front of these ankles and the shins. So you're going to lean back. Maybe this is it for you right here. If you can walk back a little further, maybe you come down to the palms. Throw your tailbone under a little bit. So you might already be feeling that. Or you can lift those knees off the mat. We're going to do a couple of... Um, Poses in the low body that you will definitely feel. We're not in the squishy, uh, feel good moments yet. And for some, we may never be there. <laughs> Let's do about 20 more seconds here. If at any point you need to put those knees down, feel free. If you have the hands behind you, go ahead and come back to that neutral position. We're going to come forward a little bit, and then we're going to step this right foot forward between our hands. Now, if you're really tight, this left knee could be directly under your left hip. You see how that's lined up? If you feel like you want more of a stretch, scoot that left knee back a bit. Uh, if you need some padding under that knee, uh, you could grab a blanket or a towel. And we're just going to lunge into this right leg and this feeling that we're dropping this left hip and thigh towards the floor. That's where you get that stretch um, in that hip flexor and that quadricep. I would say start low. I'm going to show you a couple of alternatives here in just a moment and you might be like, yeah, no, I'm, and <laughs> you could come back to this. All right, so you could stay low here, or maybe you bring your hands, forearms to that right leg. So a little bit more of an elevated version of dragon pose. That could be the shape for you, or you might just come all the way upright into a very high dragon pose. Um, a little intense. 
I'll stay here for a few more breaths and see how I feel. Yeah, I don't like. So I'm gonna come all the way back down. Fingertips to the floor. Again, if you have a prop, you could use on um, blocks under your hands here. And just about 30 more seconds. Don't you love when yoga teachers say just? Just 72 more breaths in this pose. Ten more seconds here. Now we're just going to come to tabletop and we're going to do dog up to, after the next side. So from this shape, if you took that left knee back a little bit, scoot it forward maybe. Then we're going to swing that right leg around to our tabletop. We'll restart our timer there. Left foot forward between your hands. So same idea, right knee could be under that hip or you could scoot it back a little bit. And you know, if you're tighter on one side, like I tend to run uh, a little tighter on this left side uh, from a myriad of reasons. So sometimes I will need to use props here where I didn't have to use them on the other side. Like sometimes I'll need blocks here. All right, again, you have that option of staying low or maybe coming up to the forearms like this, make, makes you look like you're pondering something great. Or coming all the way up, like you're, I guess you were about to get knighted or something. But we have that option to stay low. I did that on the first side, so I'm gonna do it on this side as well. Now from here, we get a little bit more, um, static and holding and so the next the remainder of class might feel a little better for you again so good to do this practice um, at the end of your day uh, if you have like some candles you can light some candles don't put them around your mat though because i guarantee you you will hit them and set something on fire including the possibility of yourself. But some candles could be really nice, some soft lighting, some nice music. All right, so from this one, we're gonna go into downward facing dog. So again, maybe hop that back knee up a little bit, and then maybe you start by coming into that tabletop, and then flip those toes under, hips up, down dog. You might come up and down on the toes here. That might produce some snap, crackle, pops. Doesn't me anyway. Do three more breaths there. Then from here, we're going to come down onto our belly. So we're going to do a couple of back bends here. You might just stick with one back bend of uh, Sphinx pose. This is a great way to kind of uh, a lot of times if we are uh, working on our feet and standing all day, we kind of round and cave into ourselves. This is a good way to kind of counter that. So elbows up under your shoulders. So you're propped up like a sphinx. But we are going to let this sphinx kind of soften a bit. So maybe your feet are wider than your hips, maybe as wide as your mat. And you can let yourself sink down into your shoulders here. Remember in the end, we're looking for as many ways that we can be passive in the pose as possible. And then maybe you bring your chin towards or even to your chest. If you had a block, you could put a block here to rest your head on. Uh, if you had a bolster, you could drape yourself over the bolster.
about 30 more seconds, a little more than that, in this shape. You may choose to stay in this and not go the next step that I take you. Letting that chin drop down and your head feel heavy. Again, it's so good if you spend a lot of time staring at your phone or uh, looking at a computer screen. Because we just tend to kind of position our heads very odd when we do that. Now you could stay in the shape of Sphinx or take your arms a little wider and then press into your hands and straighten your arms into seal pose. Now seal is a little bit more intense in that low back, so if this doesn't feel great, again, you stay with that shape of Sphinx. For this one, you will want the chin either parallel to the floor or even tipping the chin up. Be very mindful of what it feels like in the back of your neck. About 15 more seconds here. <clears throat> all right, and then we're gonna come all the way down. Make that little pillow out of your hands again. Rest a cheek or your forehead there, just for about seven breaths. It's a good counter pose to that back bend. So we're going into pigeon pose next, uh, getting into those hips. If pigeon is a, a shape that doesn't feel great in your, uh, your hip or your knee, uh, come onto your back and I'll talk you through an alternative in just a moment. Otherwise, bring that right knee up behind your right breast. You could do that from the own dog if that feels good. Start to walk this left leg back. And then we're gonna come down to forearms, elbows. We're gonna be here a while, but not an, an insane amount of time. If you find that you're crashing into your right hip, maybe a block or a pillow to kind of boost yourself up. If you're on your back, your right ankle on your left thigh, maybe you stay there, maybe you put that left foot up on a block, or you hug that left leg into your chest, interlacing your fingers behind thigh or over left shin. Those of you in pigeon or swan, as we call it in yin, if you can get all the way down to your chest, you can do that. I'm gonna stay up just for the purposes of, uh, of teaching. Do a little scan here, particularly around the muscles of your face, your neck and shoulder. This is where we tend to kind of uh, tighten up or create some tension as we open up these hips. Remember the key is we want to let go of as much uh, tension as we can here. More than halfway through this pose. You know, our yin practice is designed not just to create space, uh, flexibility, and muscle, but to get into connective tissue, fascial tissue. And you have to stay in it for two minutes or more to do that. bit more than 30 seconds here.
And then if you would with me, start walking those hands back towards you. And then I like to scoot this left knee forward a bit. We're gonna to go to a tabletop from here. We're gonna do dog after the next side. So draw that right knee back. You could even come into a little bit of child's pose. If you're on your back, left foot to the floor. Take that right ankle off the left leg and hug in that right knee. Maybe draw a few circles with it. And then we're gonna take it to the next side. So left knee up behind left wrist. And again, just kind of walk that right leg back. If you're on your back, it's going to be a left ankle on that right thigh. And all those alternatives. Again, this one, especially as of late, I've had to do a little bit more wiggling and fidgeting around. where the time seems to slow down when we get to this side. very closely through the door and you will see my cat Frank Sinatra sleeping on the couch. And a little more than a minute here. Ten more seconds here. And then let's walk those hands towards us if you're with me. Again, if you are on your back, uncross legs, hugging that left knee. If you're with me, ooh, tabletop, maybe into down dog. Oh. If you're on your back, hugging both knees to your chest. Maybe take the knees about hip width apart and just rock side to side. Give that low back some love. And we're going to come down. Everyone's going to find their way to their seat. So if you're with me, just come down onto your sit bones. If you're on your side, roll over to one side and prop up. Now we're going to go into a straddle, also called dragonfly. So we're going to take the legs just as wide as they can go. This is really good for these outer hips, especially if you've been uh, on your legs all day. Now, if this is really uncomfortable, a few things you could do is you could draw the feet in a little closer for one. You could have a little bend to these knees. So you could either roll up uh, towels and have those um, under your knees. If you had a block, you could maybe put your block there. All else fails, bring your feet to the floor and maybe this is your straddle, okay? So pick the shape that pleases you. You might have to reach back, kind of get some junk out the trunk. Shake these feet out a little bit. You want them a little bit passive. 
and maybe bring your hands to your shins and just hinge forward. The, the rounding or not rounding of the spine is a personal choice here. I tend to in this pose, just because there's a, a bit of distance between my chest and the floor, is just drop my chin to my chest and just allow a little bit of roundness to come into the back. If you want, you can bring your hands to the floor. Again, a bolster could be nice to have here. And just see how much you want to round in that back. This will really open up that uh, connective tissue up and down your spine. You could bring your hands to your head without pulling on it, but just a little weight there. Then that's going to stretch the back of the neck between the shoulder blades. You might feel that all the way down into your back, maybe even into your glutes and your hamstrings. We're at that halfway point here. If this roundness at the back is um, crossed from uh, discomfort to pain, feel free to come up and lengthen a bit, uh, especially if this is maybe the first time doing this shape. We're going to come out of this pose a little bit differently. So the first thing I'd like you to do is to flex your feet and just maybe an inner rotation of your legs so your, your toes are pointing up. Hands to the floor if they're not already. Use your hands to help you lengthen the spine. Then we'll walk the hands back to us. Might be a little bit of a head rush there. You're welcome. And bring those legs in. Maybe feet to the floor. Give yourself a little hug. We're gonna to return to the hips. Um, a block could be helpful. If you don't have one, there's a way around it. Um, left leg is gonna come on the bottom. If you're really tight in the hips, just cross your right shin in front of your left. If you can stack your left, right shin on top of the left, go for that. Uh, and some people can go into shoelace where, I don't know if I can do this today, but that right knee is over that left knee more than what mine is clearly. <laughs> but I feel that too, so you could also stay there. I don't have a block handy, but I do have a unicorn stool. So I'm going to bring that to the right side of my hip. We're going to do a couple of things in square before we get into uh, like the hip part. So your right elbow can be on a block or a unicorn stool. A pity you, you don't have one. Head to the right hand and just hang out here. If you have blocks, obviously you could use a block. If you have a bolster, you could use that. If you don't, you can just bring this right hand to the floor. Nothing has to actually reach the mat, but then you would just let your, your right ear kind of drop more towards your right shoulder. We're only gonna stay in this shape for like 20 more seconds, by the way. This part. This part's a little longer. Then 
very mindfully bring your torso up. Then we're gonna go into eagle arms. If you can wrap your right arm under your left, do that. If you can just hug yourself, do that. Or just draw your arm, right arm across you. This eagle, you can let your elbows drop down a bit. Great for outer shoulders, trapezius, uh, that space again between the shoulder blades. You can let your chin rest on your chest and then you get the back of the neck. Then let's unwrap those arms and then we're just going to hinge over these legs. If you have shins stacked, you can just rest your elbows there if it feels like too much to go forward. Otherwise, walk your hands out. If you're in that shape of shoelace, you might not go over as far with that right leg on top. If you would like to feel more in that right hip, walk your hands over to the left a bit. And if you did that and you're like, oh, that was a mistake, come back to the front. Just about 15 more seconds here. And come back to center. We'll roll the torso up. If you need to use hands to free up those legs, do that. Right foot to the floor, left foot to the floor. Lean back into your hands, maybe find a little back bend here. Then we'll take this to the other side. We'll do some movement after this next one. So right leg on the bottom, left shin in front, on top, or that little shoelace pose where you have the um, left knee over the right knee. Your block or your unicorn stool, if you're using one, over to this side. Left elbow on that prop, if you're using one, remember you could always just have the hand on the floor. And then uh, your head maybe is on this left hand. Just gives you a little bit more um, flow into this hip joint on this top one. Hip, man. I, I, I pretty much I share this a lot in classes uh, and a lot of schools have thought of yoga um, even body work massage that sort of thing your right side is um, considered to be sort of your problem-solving analytical side where your left side is often your emotional being so if you're having troubles in that left hip that right there just knowing that could be your answer of like oh well that makes sense all right, mindfully bring your, your torso up, left elbow under the right, or your hug, or just drawing that left arm uh, across your chest. Ooh. And I promise after this, we are pretty much into all feel good kind of stuff. And then unwrap those arms. We'll take that little bow over the leg. So maybe you prop yourself up here. Maybe you bring those hands to the floor. There's a little bit more of some roundness happening. 
And again, if you wanted to feel more of that left hip, you could walk your hands to the right. And even if you did it on the other side, but you do that here and it's like, then just bring yourself a little bit more towards the front. You don't have to completely abandon it, but don't feel like you gotta, it's not a test of endurance here. about 15 seconds. And then let's roll up. If you have a prop in play, you can move it off to the side there. Right, Mr. Unicorn. Feet to the floor. You could stay here, but have that little bit of a back bend or like little windshield wipers with your legs, just side to side. All right, then here is where we're gonna come into play, <laughs> no pun intended, with the lotion. So, you know, our feet really just could take a beating and, you know, we stand on them and then sometimes we'll ask even more of them, like we'll, we'll stand on them all day, then we'll take them out for a run or something like that, or we'll pram them into really unstylish shoes. So we're gonna show some love to these feet. So grab you some lotion. I, uh, I have one, I don't know, I got this from, I think in like a gift bag or something. It's got peppermint and tea tree, uh, but it also has CBD in it, so uh, you know, whatever. So just kind of give the, the feet a little rub first. Then you're gonna take your fingers and you're gonna interlace them between your toes like this. And you really wanna get down in that webbing of, uh, of the toes. This is going to, again, help to uh, stretch those muscles of the feet, but also the, that connective tissue. If, you have, if your feet are just tired, this feels amazing. Um, if you have like plantar fasciitis, this feels good for that. Then what I kind of do is I'll start to then kind of move my toes around a little bit. And then let that come into the ankle. Maybe some rotations. Ooh, ah. All right. Then you're just gonna free up the fingers and just kind of pull like that energy out of your toes. And then we're just gonna start to kind of twist our foot bit like you were wringing out like a dish towel and these bones they move around in your feet you know you can give that big toe something my big toe is my big toe is huge <laughs> my big toe do a lot of work let your thumbs get into the arch and the instep get in that heel better if you can get someone to do this for you. <laughs> and if you're really weirded out by this, it's your foot. You can wash your hands at the end. All right, then we're gonna switch to that other foot. Ooh, if you look at the difference, like <laughs> that foot feels so much more alive. All right, so second dose here. So the fingers of your right hand, just kind of, ooh, that, that left one, man. Just kind of get them in there. And again, you want to try to get in that webbing. Ooh, hopefully you can't see my feet too close because they, they've been looking kind of gnarly. But then start to move those toes a little bit. And maybe some pointing, flexing. You just kind of go very intuitive here. Like, what does it feel like? Ooh, that was a good pop. Ooh, that's a good pop. So just 
just go by what you think is going to feel good. In, we'll free up his fingers and just kind of again pull that energy out from the day. And start to kind of wring that foot out a little bit. It, all of it, this whole part right here should feel good. If you're doing something that hurts, you're doing something not optimally. I won't say wrong. Get in those, oh, get in those arches and insteps. Really helps if you have like a nice smelling lotion, by the way, especially to get your fingers in between those toes. All right, then we're gonna come onto our back. We're gonna do a twist and then we'll get you on your way. So start on your back. It's a very good thing we're not having to stand now since we're <laughs> so motioned up. Cross your right ankle over your left and then move your feet to that bottom left corner of your mat. And then we're gonna slide our head and shoulders over to that top corner. And your arms can just kind of come like a little picture frame here. We're just gonna do this for like 10 breaths. Good for that whole right side body. And then let's come back to the center. We'll hug that right knee into the chest. Maybe a couple of circles here with that knee. Go both directions. And then we're gonna take that right knee over to the left. Oh, good pop there too. I like to drop my right arm beside me like I would in Shavasana. This helps that right shoulder to drop towards the floor and not create more tension in that shoulder. We're gonna do this for about 10 breaths as well. Come back to the center. Send out that right leg. We're gonna cross that left ankle over the right. Move our feet to bottom right corner. Move head and shoulders to top right corner. And again, maybe a little picture frame out of the arms for about 10 breaths. And back to the center, uncross that ankle, hugging that left knee. Again, a little bit of circlage there. I don't think that's a word, but I thought it sounded cool. Left knee over to that right side. Drop that right arm beside you, or sorry, left arm beside you. Left knee over to the right, just in case I messed that up. And back to the center. Hug both knees into your chest. Maybe a happy baby pose here. And then extend out your arms and your legs. Close your eyes. I'm gonna take you through an abbreviated uh, yoga nidra into your shavasana. And then at that point you can turn this off and stay in your shavasana as long as you like. So take a deep breath in, fill up the belly, the ribs, the chest, then open your mouth, exhale. Again, deep breath, belly, ribs, chest, big open mouth, exhale. So next time as you breathe in, flex your feet, make fist. As you exhale, soften. Next breath, flex the feet, make fist, Squeeze the glutes, pull the belly in, draw the shoulders up, hold the breath at the top. Exhale, soften all of that. Next inhale, tighten all of that. 
Scrunch the shoulders up a little more. Squeeze the eyes, maybe purse the lips. Tighten the muscles in the arms and the legs. Hold, sip in a little more breath. Then open the mouth, exhale. Drop everything. So I appreciate you doing this practice and I appreciate you for what you do for us out in the world. So hopefully, Frank Sinatra's joining us now. I hope that this practice was of uh, some service to you and uh, hopefully I'll see you again on the mat soon. Namaste.